Hello, so in a previous video I talked about the problems with uh, Steam CMD. So today I'm going to discuss the installation and how to use it. So basically in Google, when you type Steam CMD, the very first website that you're going to hit is what you need. And the installation instructions are extremely simple. So I will skip the Windows installation instructions because I am on Linux. Now there is something a little bit confusing here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they first say to create a Steam user, a separate Steam user called Steam for Steam CMD. I do not recommend you doing this just because when you install Steam, you are going to install it for your own user. And the thing is, if you create a separate user for Steam CMD, uh, Steam CMD is not going to see the applications that, I mean, the games that you installed. For this reason, install Steam as your user. So skip this step right here, which says create additional user and go directly to these two steps. Basically for Ubuntu, this is all you need. You need to add uh, the Multiverse repository and uh, the three i386 architecture, then install Steam CMD. And honestly, the installation is very straightforward. There is nothing really to discuss. So next thing is run it. Oh, um, by the way, There is a little man page, as you can see right here. Um, it discusses the command line options. Personally, I don't use it with command line options. I use it interactively. It is very easy to use because now I'm going to quit the Steam. Um, when you log in into Steam CMD, it will disable Steam anyway, so I don't want both of them to mess. But yes, uh, the command line options are the same as the commands right here. So as I discussed in my previous video, if you don't know what commands do exist, of course, uh, there was something like a help here, but uh, with the command find something, you can find what commands do exist. So for example, find app will find me all commands which start or contain app which is for application the thing is if you press the up arrow the command line prompt is not um, with a cache so you're not going to get your last entered command you're going to do it the old school way you have to type everything again or copy and paste it so as we discussed, you need first to log in. And uh, the, the syntax for the login command is login, username, my username is Trefero. Now you can type a password if you want after that, but I will not do that. Um, I just typed my password. Now, the first time when you are logging in, it will send you an email with a code and uh, here it will ask you to enter this code. Right now, I already did that. It is only one time. So I'm already logged in. Now, because we are logged in, we can type apps installed and it will give me the games that I installed. Now, for example, I want to remove Marooners. So we do app uninstall. Uh, the thing is for a separator of words, 
the commands use underscore so we do app underscore uninstall and then we type the app id so this is why very often you would need to type apps underscore installed to get the application id for the installed application uh, the installed applications and right now we can see the id for marooners is this one so i just typed it and that's it it doesn't say something like um, command successful or something like that there is no command status to say so but if we type apps installed again you will see that marooners is not here okay straight forward and here comes the problem now let me demonstrate let's launch steam so the first thing that you're going to see is that marooners has been removed from uh, this machine what's this okay so library marooners if we go to marooners it has been removed fine now one experiment that i did is that it is possible to add a non steam games to your library so i added the heroes of might and magic 3 uh, there are two icons for it because i added them in two separate ways one was through lutris one was through the steam application so now because i have this problem that uh, I cannot uninstall the game from here. I cannot remove it from here because of some problem that the Steam application doesn't detect my mouse click. And I wasn't able to find a way to use the keyboard here in the menus. So when I type the arrow keys, doesn't matter the small arrow keys or from the keypad, just the menu doesn't react which is horrible i mean how can you design user interface graphical user interface when i mean where you disregard the keyboard input i mean guys this is basic user interface feature that every user expect you to do uh, and i'm talking to the steam graphical user interface application here at least the linux one so maybe the windows one will detect my keyboard and will switch the items but this one doesn't this is my problem right now i cannot remove heroes of might and magic from the library and as you can see i even don't need to log in again on steam cmd but the non linux game the non steam games are not listed here so what steam cmd can detect are only the steam games that i installed so this is another problem that i detected last night with steam cmd but aside from it steam cmd works very well very quick as you can see and yes so unfortunately i cannot remove non-steam games right now when i click it just doesn't detect my click oh yeah what to do but c'est la vie this is the life whatever i'm going to leave it right now the way it is all right but uh, yeah, point was for uh, Steam CMD. So basically, Steam CMD is ready to be used. You can actually totally ignore Steam graphical user interface. Use only Steam CMD. Again, you would need to log in every time.
and you know what <coughs> I'm sorry <coughs> there is one feature that I actually forgot to test uh, oh okay there is apps running okay nothing to run but uh, so according to the help in steam cmd we can launch a game through steam cmd let's try this actually so let's run crash drive 3 for example or something else which run faster so no we'll run crash drive 3 okay so we do app underscore run and then app id and we can do options and arguments but what are the options and arguments ah what the hell is this you put help for a command and you don't explain the command line options the uh, uh, the command the parameters and the arguments whoa bravo okay let let's try anyway so we are trying to run crash drive 3 from steam cmd missing executable what the hell this application is running missing executable why why missing executable okay Oof. i really adore untested applications how could you release something when it's not tested enough so basically what i can use steam cmd for is only to remove games command line um, which cannot be removed from the graphical client and this applies only to games which are actually steam games i cannot use steam cmd for non-steam games so yeah missing executable let me demonstrate that actually crash drive 3 runs because i just played it games uh yeah it will run steam anyway so let's run steam before that oh man 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 all right crash drive 3 it's running as you can see okay Let's exit Steam. Let's try something else. Missing executable. Wow. Let's run Crash Drive 2. No. What can we run? Pac Man. Let's try to run Pac Man. Oh, something happened. Okay. Still crashed. Why? Cannot open shared object file. Not just. Oh, there is one car out somewhere on the street with an alarm. I beg you to apologize me. Not my fault. All right, so this crashed. What can we try to run? Dig duck. Same thing same thing 
So I guess it depends on uh, the publisher here because Crash Drive 2 and 3 are from the same developer and publisher and Pac-Man, Dig Dug and Galaga again from same developer and publisher. Let's try Scott Pilgrim. Crush. Great. Maybe I'm not uh, running the right command. App update cancel. Okay. Apps installed. App status. If you have any idea why I cannot run applications from Steam CMD or maybe you use Steam CMD for something more advanced that I didn't yet figure it out just because this is the first time that I tried additional Steam CMD commands. Please do let me know in the comments, but uh, yeah, that's it. Um, as I said, the installation is very, very simple, very straightforward, but it's limited in functionality, at least from what I tried. So thank you very much for watching. I am Strayf. You're watching Skate Code. Thank you very much. Bye.